How do we as Christians fight the devil? We don't. You see oftentimes people saying things such as, I bind the devil, I rebuke you, get behind me, Satan, I'm stepping on the foot of the devil, I'm taking victory over the devil. Well, those things sound nice and they get the people hyped and motivated and maybe it serves as a bit of encouragement. The fact of the matter is none of it is true. You can't do those things. And then ultimately, if you think you can, you'll soon find out that you can and then it will have the opposite effect. Rather than encouragement, you will have discouragement and you may then blame something that's happening in your life on something else that you should not maybe i've got a demon maybe i've got a curse none of those things are true as well if you are a believer the issue is how you go about in this spiritual battle that we're in how do you engage in spiritual warfare oftentimes people are being told the wrong thing we are not told to go and do battle as a matter of fact even going to the old testament let's go to exodus this is uh, the Lord and the Lord having this conversation with Moses or Moses to the people when he's bringing them out of Egypt. And notice what he says in Exodus 14, 13. Notice what he says. But Moses said to the people, do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. Now, that's a particular issue. That's not necessarily mean that we're supposed to take that from there and apply, but it gives us something to glean how the Lord operates. God is never asking us to stand up and go to do battle with the enemy. And there's a reason why we don't have to. There are times in the Bible, such as in Jude 9, we see uh, this recounting of uh, the archangel Michael speaking about uh, Satan disputing for the body of Moses. He says that, but Michael, the archangel, when he disputed with the devil, and argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce an, against him a railing judgment, but said, the Lord rebuke you. And so it's never us that rebukes the devil. It's always the Lord. Now think about it. Michael, the archangel, pretty powerful being. Us, not so much. And I think sometimes we get it kind of mixed up to think that we have this power, but no, we don't. If you think you are that strong, the Bible says to take heed lest you fall. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. The devil does have more power than we do. However, his power is limited not to where he can control us, but he can offer some influence and send things our way. Notice in Luke 22, when Jesus is speaking to Peter, he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. Now you would think that because this is uh, an apostle of the Lord, he's following Jesus, that the Lord would have imbued him with some sort of power, told him to just rely on the spirit, cast him away, defeat him, bind him, those things. No, Jesus didn't say any such thing. First of all, Satan asked for permission, meaning that if it's coming your way, it's likely because the Lord is allowing it. And then notice what he says to Peter. He didn't say that, Peter, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to hold it back. No, he says that, but I have prayed for you. Well, Jesus, how about this? How about you pray or you do something to him? How about you deny permission? But no, the Lord says, I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. So think about it. He's saying, I want you emboldened for this. And then also something interesting to see here. He says, and when you return again, strengthen your brothers. And so that kind of gives us an insight as to why the Lord allows the enemy to come to us. He's not going to be victorious, but in us in having faith and being strengthened through that, we grow through these battles, we grow through these confrontations. And then what do we do? Likewise, after that, during that, we also turn and strengthen our brothers. That should be something that we should make note of, that when we go through these trials, these battles, these spiritual warfares that we are going to go through inevitably, because as I've said before, just because you're a Christian, that does mean that you cannot have a demon, but it does not mean that you cannot have a demon present. There are demonic activity and influences all around you. You may have someone across the street, maybe someone in your house, someone, your, a co-worker. Certainly when you're driving to work or to and fro on the highways, there's certainly demonic activity on the highways. And so you encounter the activities of the enemy. But also remember, you are never departing the activity of the Lord. The Spirit is present with you. There are angels. There is the Lord. The Holy Spirit is there with you always. And so 
There is no need for you to fight. All you have to do is to withstand them, to resist them. As a matter of fact, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, James tells us to submit, therefore, to, the, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Now, that's for those who happen to be humble, those who think that, you know what? I cannot defeat him, nor should I have to. All I've got to do is what he says, resist him. Draw near to God, resist him. And what does the devil do? He flees. So Peter tells us to be sober, be of sober spirit, be on alert. Your adversary, indicating we understand that he is not for us, he's against us, which is the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. But resist him. Stand firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. A couple of things. Notice he says that uh, the same experiences of suffering. In other words, there will be some suffering for us. But he says, resist him. Stand firm in your faith, which is what Peter was told by Jesus. Now, what is Peter doing? Him being told that by Jesus, he's telling us to do the exact same thing. But going back, he says, he is looking, he's going around prowling, prowling, seeking someone to devour. Well, what do lions do? What do uh, predators do? They typically look for the weak ones. They look for the ones who are not observant, the ones who are doing something they shouldn't, who are away from the group. And that's how the enemy comes after us. And so we are not to give an opportunity for the devil. Sometimes we get mad or angry at someone, there's an argument, there's a fight, there's different things that are happening, and we get ourselves away from where we should be, and it gives the enemy an opportunity to come in and to cause all sorts of grief. However, though, it's not permanent. We can always fight no matter how he has us, no matter what he's doing. Uh, his will is not superior to the will of the Father. His will doesn't even subjugate our will. We can always resist him no matter where he is in terms of proximity, no matter where the other demons are in terms of proximity. They are never strong enough to uh, thwart what we're doing. Why? Because John tells us that's greater is he, that's the spirit of the Lord in us, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And so we don't have to fight. All we're told to do is to resist. Now, you can decide on your own if you want to fight him. I promise you, you'll get nowhere. All you will have is frustration. You can't rebuke him. You can't bind him. The only time that he's going to be bound is when the Lord binds him with an angel for a thousand years. And then after that, he's released and then he's ultimately defeated. But we don't bind him. If he could be bound, think about it. Our binding skills need some work because every day he gets bound. Someone all over the world, they're binding the devil in the name of Jesus. Binding Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And he keeps getting loose. So... It's not working. Or I rebuke you or I cast you away into the pit. He keeps getting out. Uh, you keep rebuking him. And what does that do? Absolutely nothing. But what you can do to be victorious, how you fight him is you don't fight him. How you deal with him is you don't deal with him. How you confront him is you don't confront him. What you do instead is draw closer to the Lord. I can promise you this. If the enemy is here and the Lord is there, where do you want to go to? You want to be closer to the Lord. The closer you get to the Lord, the further you get away from the enemy. I can promise you, he has no interest in going up against the Father. Amen. Amen.